Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today we'll look at a recent clinical trial of resveratrol as a supporting supplement in the treatment of type 2 diabetes. In the study, they saw that resveratrol significantly improved markers of glucose homeostasis, as well as inflammation and oxidative stress. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper, Role of Resveratrol Supplementation in Regulation of Glucose Hemostasis, Inflammation and Oxidative Stress in Patients with Diabetes Mellitus, Type 2, a randomized placebo-controlled trial. A quick review of the highlights before we go into more detail. Resveratrol, in combination with the standard drugs to reduce blood sugar, was effective at preventing disease progress of type 2 diabetes. Resveratrol significantly reduced the HOMA IR and insulin levels and to a lesser extent fasting glucose and HbA1c. It was also effective as an anti-inflammatory and antioxidative agent, shown by the decrease in HSCRP, interleukin-6, TNF-alpha and malonaldehyde. It also modulates the expression of microRNAs associated with type 2 diabetes. This was a randomized placebo-controlled trial, where resveratrol was taken in combination with a prescribed OHGA. Here, an OHGA is an oral hypoglycemic agent, so a drug that reduces blood sugar. T2DM has loss of glucose homeostasis, so this was one of the key measures using fasting, plasma glucose, insulin, HbA1c, and HOMA IR. T2-DM also sees an increase in inflammation, which they have measured with TNF-alpha, interleukin-6, HSCRP, and also oxidative stress measured with malonaldehyde concentration. And finally, they looked at the expression of microRNAs, which are associated with T2-DM. A couple of points to go over. What is HbA1c? Red blood cells live for about four months and the hemoglobin in them tends to react with sugar in the blood, a process called glycation. The level of glycation therefore provides a measure of blood sugar over the last three months. HOMA IR, or homostatic model of insulin resistance, is a calculation which estimates insulin resistance based on the fasting glucose and fasting insulin levels. This is my very simplified understanding of how micro RNAs work and why they are important. When we are making proteins, messenger RNA reads the amino acid sequence from the DNA. It then should go to the ribosome where the exposed nuclear bases can be read to assemble the protein. However, if matching micro RNA finds it first, it can bind to the exposed bases and block the protein assembly hence silencing or reducing the impact of the gene. The expression of these microRNAs can differ with different diseases, and their concentration has been proposed as markers for the various diseases. The trial included participants who were 18 to 70 years old and who had had diabetes for five years or more. A total of 275 patients were admitted and divided into five groups of 55. In this study, they only reported on two groups, the placebo and the resveratrol groups. The dose was 200 milligrams of 99% pure transresveratrol in a capsule, which was taken in the morning for a period of 24 weeks. The resveratrol was taken in combination with the other glucose lowering drugs, for example, metformin. Here are the results. First, the changes in markers of blood glucose. The first two columns are the before and after for placebo, and we can see that this was flat or higher in all cases. For the resveratrol group, we can see a significant decrease for each of them, with 8.59% for insulin and 13.93% for HOMA IR, and smaller but still significant decreases of 5.6% for HbA1c and 5.9% for glucose. They also looked at markers for inflammation, interleukin-6, TNF-alpha, HSCRP, and malonaldehyde. Again, for the placebo, all the results were flat. For the resveratrol group, 
there was a larger decrease, 137.3% for interleukin-6, 12.7% for TNF-alpha, and 11.94% for HSCRP. In terms of reduced oxidative stress, there was a 8.72% decrease in malonaldehyde. And finally, microRNAs. As discussed earlier, microRNAs can inhibit gene expression, and the concentration of the various miRNAs is influenced by the progress of the disease. They look to see if the miRNA associated with T2DM were impacted by resveratrol. Some of the miRNAs, which are upregulated in T2DM, were lowered, while some of them, which are normally downregulated, were increased to a significant level, while the placebo groups were largely unchanged. A couple of last points to cover. The authors also looked at the blood lipids, but saw no significant changes in triglycerides, LDL, or HDL. And there was no adverse effects reported. In the case of type 2 diabetes, resveratrol did have a positive result on the markers of blood sugar and insulin resistance, inflammation, oxidative stress, and microRNA expression. Whether it would have had a bigger impact on the blood sugar markers if the patients were not already taking drugs to lower these is an interesting question. It did also work in lowering markers of inflammation, always a good thing. 